Sumerian culture and the Anunnaki, working from the same archaeological discoveries, artifacts, and recovered records as archaeologists and linguists have for 200 years. Sitching propounds proves, in the opinion of this author, that the Anunnaki, Sumerian, those who came down from the heavens, Old Testament Hebrew, Anakim, Nephilim, Elohim, Egyptian, Nita, an advanced civilization from the tenth planet in our solar system, splashed down in the Persian Gulf area around 432,000 years ago, colonized the planet with the purpose of obtaining large quantities of gold. Some 250,000 years ago, the recovered documents tell us their lower echelon miners rebelled against the conditions in the mines and the Anunnaki Directorate decided to create a creature to take their place. Enki, their chief scientist and Nin Hersag their chief medical officer, after getting no satisfactory results splicing animal and homo erectus genes merged their Anunnaki genes with that of Homo erectus and produced us, Homo sapiens, a genetically becameral species, for their purposes as slaves. Because we were a hybrid, we could not procreate. The demand for us as workers became greater and we were genetically manipulated to reproduce. Eventually, we became so numerous that some of us were expelled from the Anunnaki city centers, gradually spreading over the planet, having become a stable genetic stock and developing more precociously than, perhaps, the Anunnaki had anticipated. The Anunnaki began to be attracted to humans as sexual partners and children were born of these unions. This was unacceptable to the majority of the Anunnaki High Council and it was decided to wipe out the human population through a flood that was predictable when Nibiru the tenth in our solar system and the Anunnaki home planet came through the inner solar system again around 12,500 years ago on one of its periodic 3,600 year returns some humans were saved by the action of the Anunnaki official Enki who was sympathetic to the humans he had originally genetically created for thousands of years we were their slaves their workers their servants, and their soldiers in their political battles among themselves. The Anunnaki used us in the construction of their palaces, we retro-project the religious notion of temple on these now, their cities, their mining and refining complexes and their astronomical installations on all the continents. They expanded from Mesopotamia to Egypt to India to South and Central America and the stamp of their presence can be found in the foggiest reaches of the planet. Around 6,000 years ago, they, probably realizing that they were going to phase off the planet, began, gradually, to bring humans to independence. Suma, a human civilization, amazing in its sudden, mature, and highly advanced character was set up under their tutelage in Mesopotamia. Human kings were inaugurated as go-betweens, foremen of the human populations answering to the Anunnaki, a strain of humans, genetically enhanced with more Anunnaki genes. A bloodline of rulers in a tradition of servants of the people was initiated, Gardner. These designated humans were taught technology, mathematics, astronomy, advanced crafts and the ways of advanced civilized society, in schools, called now mystery schools but there was no mystery about them. Gardner has brought to light the fact that there exists a robust, highly documented, genealogical, genetic history carrying all the way back to the Anunnaki, possessed by the heterodox tradition of Christianity, which is only now coming forward, no longer gun shy of the Inquisition. This tradition, preserving the bloodline, is the one branded heretical and murderously persecuted by the Roman Church. There were no dark ages for this tradition, only for those whom the Church wanted to keep in the dark about the real nature of human history and destroy the bloodline, a direct threat to the power of the bishops. What evidence supports the Sitchin thesis? The astronomical evidence, 
No concrete problem is going to be solved as long as the experts of astronomy are too supercilious to touch mythical ideas, which are firmly believed to be plain nonsense. Of course, as long as historians of religion swear to it that stars and planets were smuggled into originally healthy fertility cults and naive fairy tales only very late, whence these unhealthy subjects should be neglected by principle, and as long as the philologists imagine that familiarity with grammar replaces that scientific knowledge which they lack and dislike. Giorgio di Sontilana Ph.D. and Hertha von Deckend, Ph.D. Hamlet's Mill. A key underpinning of the Sitchin paradigm is the existence, now or in the past, of the tenth planet in our solar system, the home planet of the Anunnaki with the size, orbit, and characteristics described, as Sitchin has demonstrated, in the Enuma Elish and corroborated by Harrington former chief of the U.S. Naval Observatory, now deceased. Tom Baugh discovered Pluto in 1930. Cresty, of the U.S. Naval Observatory, discovered Charon, Pluto's moon, in 1978. The characteristics of Pluto derivable from the nature of Charon demonstrated that there must still be a large planet undiscovered because Pluto could not be the cause of the residuals. The wobbles in the orbital paths of Uranus and Neptune clearly identifiable. The IRAS, infrared astronomical satellite, during 83-84, produced observations of a tenth planet so robust that one of the astronomers on the project said that all that remains is to name it, from which point the information has become curiously guarded. In 1992 Harrington and Van Flanden of the Naval Observatory, working with all the information they had at hand, published their findings and opinion that there is, indeed, a tenth planet, even calling it an intruder planet. The search was narrowed to the southern skies, below the ecliptic. Harrington invited Sachin, having read his book and translations of the Enuma Elish, to a meeting at his office and they correlated the current findings with the ancient records. The recovered Enuma Elish document, A History of the Formation of Our Solar System and More, says that, at the time when Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Uranus and Saturn were in place, there was a Uranus-sized planet called Shi'amat, in orbit between Mars and Jupiter. Earth was not in place yet. A large wandering planet, called Nibiru, was captured into the system gravitationally. As it passed by the outer planets it caused the anomalies of their moons, the tilting of Uranus on its side, the dislodging of Pluto from its being a moon of Saturn to its own planetary orbit, its path bent by the gravitational pull of the large planets, First its satellites collided with the large planet Shi'amat and, on a second orbit through, Nibiru collided with Shi'amat, driving the larger part of it into what is now Earth's orbit to recongeal as Earth, dragging its moon with it to become our moon with all its anomalies. The shattered debris of Shi'amat's smaller part became the asteroid belt, comets, and meteorites. The gouge of our Pacific Basin is awesome testimony to the collisional event. Nibiru settled into a 3,600-year elliptical retrograde, opposite direction to all the other planets, orbit around our Sun, coming in through the asteroid belt region between Mars and Jupiter at Perigee and swinging far out past Pluto at Apage. Harrington acknowledged that his information agreed with all these details and the maps they each had drawn of the orbits were almost indistinguishable. The current probable location of Nibiru, planet X, our tenth, estimated by both was the same. It is the opinion of this author and others that, in light of the evidence already obtained through the use of the Pioneer 10 and 11 and 2 Voyager spacecraft, the infrared imaging satellite, IRAS, 83-84, and the clear and unequivocal statements of Harrington when consulting with Sitchin, that the search has already been accomplished, in fact that the planet has already been found, 
we need to force the issue of the tenth planet being in our solar system, not just to demonstrate the validity of the new paradigm but for a very practical reason. The ancient records are very clear. The passage of the tenth planet, Nibiru, once every 3,600 years, through the inner solar system affects the Earth, sometimes in catastrophic ways. It is very probably the cause of polar shifts, pole reversals, changes in the precessional movement, perhaps even catastrophic bombardment by asteroid-sized space debris that it may drag along with it, since it passes through the asteroid belt area between Mars and Jupiter and its orbital path may vary depending on the position of the other planets when it comes though, it may have been responsible for the devastation of Mars. A rigorous, detailed computer modeling of the solar system, including the tenth planet needs to be done urgently for our own planetary safety. Remember that the Vatican maintains an astronomical observatory and Monsignor, Aldici may have access to information that prompts him to make the amazing statements he has, no doubt as voice of the Vatican. The technological evidence. Two parts is the term used to describe the purportedly out of place in time artifacts, toys, tools, technical devices, depictions and documents which have come to light through archaeological excavation or discovery. Almost everyone is familiar, through published works or documentaries, with the clay pot batteries still containing the electrodes from the Iraqi desert dated at 2500 BC, the flyable model airplane from a pyramid tomb, the sophisticated machining of stone requiring the most advanced techniques we know today, the 1000 ton precision cut blocks of stone in a temple foundation that we could not even handle, an ancient relief frieze from an Abydos temple depicting rockets, airplanes and even a helicopter, etc. The most recent and quite amazing part is the rediscovery of monatomic gold by David Hudson. Monatomics are superconductors at room temperature, have antigravitic properties and are only now being investigated by the advanced physics community. Hudson's discovery, correlated with the bringing to light, by Gardner, of the suppressed discovery of the Anunnaki gold processing plant on M.T. Horeb by Sir Flinders Petrie in 1889 demonstrates that the monatomics were already known at least 3,000 years ago. These parts coupled with evidence from many disciplines and the historical records indicate that an advanced civilization existed in those times possessing high technology and that that civilization was indeed the Anunnaki. The documentary evidence. The recorded historical documentation for the existence and deeds of the Anunnaki has become gradually available to us only since the early 1800s. The excavation of the ancient sites of Mesopotamia brought to light the amazingly advanced civilization of Sumo and, with it, thousands of clay tablets containing not only mundane records of commerce, marriages, military actions and advanced astronomical calculation systems but of the history of the Anunnaki themselves. It is clear from those records that the Sumerians knew these aliens to be real flesh and blood. The library of the ruler, Ashurbanipal, at Nyanava was discovered to have burnt down and the clay tablets held there were fired, preserving them for our reading. One of the most impressive finds, in very recent time, has been a sealed, 9 foot by 6 foot room in Sipara holding, neatly arranged on shelves, a set of some 400 elaborate clay tablets containing an unbroken record of the history of those ancient times, a sort of time capsule. The evidence is so overwhelming and robust that, if it weren't for those with power enough to suppress, it would have been accepted and our worldview changed a century ago or, perhaps, sooner. The genetic evidence. The recovered records place the location of the Anunnaki laboratory where the first humans were literally produced in East Central Africa just above their gold mines. 
This falls precisely on the map where the mitochondrial DNA search for Eve places the first woman homo sapiens and in the same period, the gold mining engineers of Africa have found 100,000 year old gold mines in the area. The evidence for and description of advanced genetic engineering is all there in the ancient documents. Our rapid progress from inception to going to Mars soon, after only 250,000 years, does not correspond to the million year periodicities of slow evolutionary development of other species such as Homo erectus before us. As so many thinkers have pointed out, we are radically and anomalously different as discussed in part 3.